Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. That's right, Katniss Everdeen, finally, ultimately, at long last, and after much waiting, plotting, planning, and otherwise biding time, Katniss Everdeen finally storms the Capitol in The Hunger Games, Mockingjay, Part 2, another film in which the title serves as a potent example of its flaws. Much like the title Terminator Genesis, which was as poorly thought out and hastily assembled as the movie which bears its name, the title of The Hunger Games, Mockingjay, Part 2, <gasps> takes a book that was titled simply Mockingjay and adds four more words, a number, a colon, and a hyphen. For a cinematic saga that loves its symbols, that title is a striking one. A story of great quality and impact being diluted with unnecessary length and redundancy. In the end, this film series as a whole is tarnished in the final leg by the transparently greedy decision to split its final chapter into two movies. It just makes me mad! Like a fairy tale first date which ends with a girl pooping the bed, it's easy just to angrily dismiss the whole experience, which is unfortunate because of how much this movie got right. When this movie kicks into gear like a car with a bum transmission, vroom, the effect is pronounced. You can feel it in your bones, becoming a real movie again. The tension is palpable, and we're back to heart-pounding adventure filmmaking at its finest. The sad fact is, there is a solid two and a half hour movie in the combined four and a half hour running time of both Hunger Games Mockingjay parts one and two. This hypothetical cut of the movie, which exists only in my head, which would cover all the same thematic and storytelling ground, just with tighter pacing, would be a thoughtful thrill ride and take a place of honor on the DVD shelf next to the first two excellent films in the franchise. Do I recommend The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2? Well, that should be a foregone conclusion. If you saw the other two films, you're gonna see this one. Just be patient and be prepared to pick through the filler for the good stuff. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. And as always, I will remain spoiler free. Now, I think we all know who to blame. It's all Harry Potter's fault. When Warner Brothers made the decision to split J.K. Rowling's massive book into two parts in 2009, it made sense. That book unspooled loads of backstory that would be crucial to the climax, so splitting the movie into two movies was sold as a way for book fans to see more of the material that they loved on screen. The first part was going to be a cool road movie with the kids searching for mysterious objects, and the last chapter was essentially going to be one big extended battle scene with lots of plot points and twists wrapping up seven books worth of story. Both movies were released to critical acclaim and were mammoth hits. But of course, smelling all that franchise money, other movie studios followed suit and greed caused studios to do the same with the final chapters of Twilight and to embellish J.R.R. Tolkien's shortest book into three three-hour epics. Corporate greed, creating an excuse for studios to charge you the same ticket price and ramp up the entire publicity machine every few years, including trailers, posters, premieres, and then not deliver you a complete movie. Suddenly, that's just okay now. How bad has it become? Well, Marvel Studios has already let us know that they are planning for the next Avengers story, Infinity War, to be in two parts. Because as everyone knows, that book is so big that there's no way they could possibly tell the... I gotcha! There is no book! They can make it as long as they want to, and they're still going to give you an incomplete story on purpose. Thanks a lot, Harry Potter! I want complete stories when I go to the movies. Call me crazy. Even middle chapters like Empire Strikes Back or Back to the Future 2 had complete story arcs that wrapped up completely before opening the door to a new chapter in the final reel. By comparison, Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 was just a drab talk fest. The story's action-adventure elements were always taking a back seat to a bunch of sober political discussion. And gee, I, I can't remember the last time that happened in a great franchise. I, 
I can't remember because I've blocked certain movies out of my memory. Honestly, tell me five story beats of Mockingjay Part 1. Go ahead. I'll wait. This is important. Tell me five things that happened in the story that changed the trajectory of the story. I bet you only got two, didn't you? And that movie was two hours and four minutes long. So here we have Mockingjay Part 2. And for the first hour or so, it again drags its feet. In some cases, repeating entire scenes from the first Mockingjay film. Almost like a recap? Hey, remember when Katniss was being coached into providing effectively rousing speeches on camera for propaganda purposes? Well, in case you didn't, you'll get it again. How about Katniss walking through a group of rebels, all who stop what they're doing, in awe and just salute her? Yep, you'll get that same scene in part two, beat for beat. The movie just spins its wheels, going nowhere, and just when I was beginning to hate this film for wasting my time, it slammed into gear and all of a sudden became exciting. Familiar sections of the score started blazing through at opportune moments, reminding me how great the score was. Characters I cared about were all of a sudden faced with death in increasingly horrifying ways and either escaped or didn't in dramatic fashion. Katniss is still a perfect movie heroine. Peta is still the perfect tragic underdog. And Gail, Gail is still really good looking. That's pretty much it. But I will say that Gale is fleshed out here more than any of the previous movies. The end of the film, which takes five or six scenes to get across information that could have easily been accomplished more dramatically in a montage, is nevertheless an emotional and graceful conclusion to a stirring cinematic saga, one that lives up to the promise of Suzanne Collins' excellent novels. Yes, book readers, all of the plot twists that made you hurl your books across the room, then immediately run over and pick them up and start reading again, are here. So, so-and-so still dies, and so does so-and-so, and also so-and-so. And their death is just as poignant, or heartbreaking, or awesome, or chilling, as you imagined when you first read it in the books. For those who have not read the books, be prepared for some dark and seriously dramatic turns that you will not see coming. As I said, if there ever is an economical cut of this film with the first film together, it would be profoundly entertaining, packed with drama and tension and emotion. It would be an extra large bag of popcorn to be sure. So get on it, internet! If we can get a cut of Phantom Menace with no Jar Jar Binks, then we can have someone create the ultimate cut of Mockingjay, the cut that should have been released in theaters. And hey, uh, Lionsgate, if you wanted to milk this thing for more money, you could have just followed the Lord of the Rings example of releasing the theatrical and then the expanded versions on home video. I'll even promise you that you'll get my money twice if you release the streamlined version on Blu-ray. Just get me that version because that's the one I want to watch. This version, as a movie, it's a medium bag of popcorn. You will not be uh, disappointed with the way that the Hunger Games story ends, but you will find your patience and maybe your bladder tested by this overlong, overindulgent final chapter. That does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget to sound off in the comments below and click the thumbs up if you liked what you saw. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and of course, click subscribe right there for easy access to all my reviews. I'll be back soon with more reviews. In the meantime, I'm the Colonel. Thanks for watching, and may the odds be ever in your favor.